Hi everyone, I'm Julia and this is Julia at Home. Many of you know I'm in the United States and in this country we have a holiday called Columbus Day which is coming up soon. I have called this for years Indigenous People Day and a lot of states and areas around the country are picking up on that and calling it that as well. Our state of Vermont, I believe, within this past year has renamed it Indigenous People Day. And that is what this video is going to be about. And I want to talk to you a little bit about why, and then I'm going to share some resources with you and some ideas. So if you want to skip my little rant here, I'll um, put the timestamp below for when I start sharing resources. Our treatment of Native Americans in history and current day is really something that's been on my mind. And it's touched on in history class, right? Um, the Pilgrims and the Indians, Pocahontas, maybe you cover the Trail of Tears a little bit, but really not enough. And it is something that we really need to grapple with as a country, what, what we have done and what its lasting and current effects are, just as we are trying to grapple with the history and current effects of slavery in our country. So I am obviously a white woman. <laughs> I do not identify as Native American. And so um, the first thing I will say is that I think we should go to Native sources and um, Native peoples that are living today and uh, turn to them for what we should do and how we move forward and for healing. Um, but that said, being just this one white homeschooling mama um, what I what I can do is first of all um, be aware in myself. For example, I am living on Abenaki land here. Um, this is land that was taken, and I cannot change the current system, but I can acknowledge and honor that. Um, and then the other big thing that I can do is uh, teach my children. Is um, and learn with them about Native American culture today and about the history because we need to acknowledge that history in order to continue moving forward. One thing that is frankly um, a problem, I believe, in our country is the celebration of Columbus Day. Now, of course, we all want a day off. I have no problem with that. But why are we celebrating Columbus? He wasn't even the first person most likely to come over here from Europe. Um, and I'm, I'm not faulting him alone for colonization. Um, I, having studied history a bit, I know that Europe was overflowing to the brim and it was probably inevitable. However, I don't think we need to celebrate it. I think that um, celebrating the colonization and what became... Um, essentially a massacre of the native peoples who lived here um, is is not is is not something that we should be celebrating um, it makes me think of a, a vacation I took to Rome and they probably have these in other great places in the world too but they have these big triumphs these big arches and it was to celebrate um, the victory of a battle, of a war. And um, the idea was as you marched under that, or every time somebody walked under that, it was like re-celebrating that war. And I realize re-celebrating is the word, but um, in a way we are piling more harm on by celebrating um, colonization itself, but also this man who came and treated the native people quite horribly. Um, so, I don't think we should be celebrating Columbus Day at all. Um, and I think it is right and just that we do celebrate Indigenous People Day and um, we hear more from them and acknowledge them and the struggles that they've been through and learn about some of the wonderful aspects of what um, makes each community, each, each community, each tribe um, special and unique and um, a gift to the rest of us in this world. Okay, that was my mini rant. <laughs> and now I just wanna share a few resources and ideas with you. If you are um, a parent or a homeschooler or even a teacher, that maybe you could just start, start to acknowledge um, the Native Americans and learn more about them. So I love books, so I'm gonna start with some of my favorite books. 
The Very First Americans is um, a cool one because it goes through the different areas of the country and um, a little bit about some different tribes so that you're getting the idea that they're, they're not all the same. It's not just one big group of Native Americans that were living here. There's many, many tribes, um, and they were all different. And it's really just a good starter book for young kids. So that's the very first Americans. I also just want to mention I look for books and resources that um, Native Americans say it shows them in a good light, if that makes sense. There's some websites. I'll see if I can find them and link below that have had suggestions for better quality Native American books. Um, I don't want books that Native people feel portray them inaccurately. <laughs> One author who is highly recommended is Joseph Bruchak. Um, I have the spelling here. <laughs> He's prolific. He has quite a few books. So I'm going to show you some of the ones that we have of his. This is Crazy Horse's Vision, and we did this one in our American Biographies. I'll link that video as well. Um, we've got The First Strawberries. Thirteen Moons on a Turtle's Back is actually a collection of stories. There's one for each of 13 moons. And then um, this is beautiful. This is The Earth Under Sky Bears Feet. And it's a, it's a selection of poems, and it's with Thomas Locker, who I have other books that he's done and illustrated because his illustrations are gorgeous. So this is a poetry book. It's just good to have different kinds of resources. Um, he also has some longer books. So he has, we've read Children of the Longhouse and we really enjoyed it. And we're actually about to start um, The Arrow Over the Door as a read aloud. Um, so I'm excited about that one as well. It's about an Abenaki boy and a Quaker boy. And I actually have um, Quaker ancestry. That'll be really fun for us to read. Although this video is about Indigenous People Day and not Thanksgiving, I do want to say that I don't also don't really do the whole Pilgrims and Indian story with my children um, in the way that our culture often does. Um, so I, I, I'm careful about which books I get for Thanksgiving, but there's two that I use for Thanksgiving that are also relevant to Indigenous People Day. And one is this Giving Thanks Native American Good Morning message. And it's a beautiful thank you message. Um, and it's, it's I believe it's um, taken from the Mohawk. Um, and it's, I believe, a message that they would have said before important meetings. Um, I'm going to read you the author's note quickly. It says, The words in this book are based on the Thanksgiving address, an ancient message of peace and appreciation of Mother Earth and all her inhabitants. These words of thanks come to us from the native people, um, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce right now, but also known as the Iroquois or Six Nations. So, um, it's a beautiful book. I actually ended up with two copies, and I just kept them both because I love it so much. The other one is Squanto's Journey. Um, and this is also by Bruchak there. Um, it's the story of the first Thanksgiving, but told in, in the story of Squanto's life. Um, I'll show you some of the pictures there. So um, when I was doing research on what was the best way to share the Thanksgiving story with my children, um, this book came up quite a few times. So um, this is really the only way in which we share that story. Um, and otherwise, I try to focus the day on kind of a, a harvest festival giving thanks for what we have and for family and friends. Just focusing on thankfulness as opposed to um, the story, at, um, really. This makes me think that maybe I should do another video of my favorite Thanksgiving book. So if you want that, um, comment below and let me know and also make sure you like this video. Some other ideas of things for do, to do for Indigenous People Day or any time of the year um, are to visit um, museums that have some Native American um, artifacts in them or you know we've been to a nature center where they had a replica of a longhouse that my children were able to go in and I've as a child been to some places um, so just trying to seek out more information you can on the culture um, you might even be able to um, meet and talk to um, local uh, like Native Americans local to you um, maybe you'll see them doing some um, crafts. You could also learn about um, famous uh, Native Americans in history. One that comes to my mind is Maria Tallchief. 
Um, I believe she was a ballerina. I also just wanted to mention the book series Keeper Keepers of the Earth. There's like Keepers of the Earth, Keepers of the Night, Keeper of the Keepers of the Animals, and they are beautiful. And I've taken them out from the library before, and I just don't I don't have them myself right now to show you. But I wanted to mention to look out for those. Um, they combine um, stories um, with um, some projects project ideas you can do. So Indigenous People Day, instead of Columbus Day, is a great start to um, acknowledging and appreciating the Native cultures that were here before colonization. Um, and I think just replacing Columbus Day um, is, is a good first step. Um, but of course, we should learn about um, and acknowledge Native peoples all year round. So I encourage you to do that in any way that you can. If you have more ideas, please share them below. This is again, just like a jumping off starting point. I have young children. So this is where I am starting. Um, I'm hoping to learn and grow and do more as I age, <laughs> um, as I learn, uh, as I continue to learn through life. So um, please like this video, Give uh, click that thumbs up down there. If you haven't subscribed and you like this video, you must subscribe so that you can see more videos like it. And I hope you have a wonderful Indigenous People Day.